Thank you guys so much for being here. We're so excited. This is the launch of our book, Chosen. Chosen is a special creation by the Elite Foundation and the beautiful authors that you're going to see here today. We're extremely excited to announce also that this is the fifth book that Elite Foundation has published in a collaborative manner and the first book that we've actually done as a workbook. So this will be able to propel your story, propel your relationships, propel all of the reflections that you have into a whole new level. So before we begin, let me just tell you a little bit about the Elite Foundation. Elite stands for End Lost Innocence to Exploitation. The Elite Foundation is a 501c3 that was founded in 2016 by Dr. Jessica Vera and myself, Wendy Elliott. So I'm the co-founder of the Elite Foundation. Our vision is to power, powered by people coming together to bring an end to the aftermath of human exploitation and sex trafficking by co-creating a future for every survivor. So our goal is to help every survivor have the best life that they can. And we have three pillars with the Elite Foundation, educate, evolve, and empower. And those three pillars help us function all of our programs. And our programs include the Eye Care Resource Center that Angel Carter manages. It, it involves the Elite Fly Mentoring Ship Program, which we have to escalate um, young adults through the Broward Community College, as well as younger children, the mentorship programs with that to help them prevent anything like this ever happening to them again. We also have Traffic Proof, which is our educational program. We have a K through 12 education program to also bring that awareness and education component to all children out there so that they won't have to experience the sexual exploitation and trafficking that we've seen so significantly throughout our communities. We also have the Project Stay Gold, which is our high school abolitionists who have taken it upon themselves to educate their peers and work through everything that we've given them to be able to, again, prevent sexual exploitation and trafficking happening within their generation. And then our international program, the CARA Safe Haven House, that we've uh, funded through grants through the Elite Foundation for 24 young ladies who are sexually exploited in Uganda and who need a place to recover and get back into school, get back into their lives. So through all of those programs, we're extremely excited to talk about our publishing program. So Elite's publishing program is one of the operational components of the Elite Foundation to allow us to continue a lot of those programs. So as the authors come in, any of the um, monies that comes in through this collaborative program goes to fund each of those programs. So it's really significant and exciting for us because we get to hear these amazing stories. And here at Elite, we know that your story is the secret to your success. So being able to tell your story and develop a platform through the book format is better than any business card that you can ever have. And the collaborative writing program is exceptionally fun because you get to meet all of these exceptional other authors that also have a platform. So that expands your network of what you're able and capable of doing throughout um, the other's network because whoever reads your story in the book are also going to read everyone else's story. And you have that ability to network and have a sisterhood, brotherhood of people that you will know forever. You know, we have a lot of uh, folks that continue to support the foundation that were our first authors like Nancy. Um, Nancy has been here with us for a long time and continues to support uh, the Elite Foundation and her volunteer work and everything else. So we are just so excited and over the moon proud of everyone here and can't wait to share with everybody all the names, all the faces, all the stories that we have going on here. So our first author is going to be Sandra Marie Anderson. Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. I'm so happy to be here. So my name is Sandra Anderson. I am an author. I'm a grandmother and a mother. I'm also the CEO and founder of Love Gardens Ministries International. It's a mentoring and counseling organization where we help people make sense of what they may not be able to make meaning of. Um, counseling has been one of the greatest um, endeavors I've ever done in my life because I so needed counseling so many years ago. And so now I have the 
privilege and pleasure of counseling others and helping others reach um, health and wellness in every area of their life. Um, so tell us a little bit about your chapter and one takeaway that you would want your readers to have after they get finished with it. So thank you, Wendy. That's a great question. My chapter is called The Chosen Road. And I wrote that chapter because I did not know that I was on the chosen road. Sometimes when we're going through a lot of painful situations, be it heartbreak, uh, family issues, we don't know that we've been chosen. And so the chosen road hopefully will lead the readers into understanding that no matter where they are in their life, no matter how broken, how hopeless it may seem that they're right where they're supposed to be if they would just change their perception of it. Because sometimes our perception can be a little skewed, a little flawed. But once we understand that, it's so much more than we think it is. And that yes, we're on the chosen road, especially when we're trusting in God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. That was that was amazing. And I can't wait for everybody to hear, hear and read your story. Um, in, in our book, Chosen. So our next author is going to be Ms. Gail Moore. And, you know, Gail and um, the Elite Foundation have known each other for quite a few, quite a few years. And Gail is a very accomplished um, singer, songwriter, and um, uh, philanthropic uh, heart as well. So I'm going to unmute her and let her come to the forefront. Hey, hi. So tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Gail Moore. I am a singer, songwriter, producer, and I'm also the C CEO of a foundation uh, called Yes I Can, which is a nonprofit 501c3, where we use the platform of sports and contemporary music to reach kids in crisis internationally. And we've been doing that for about uh, 25, 30 years. My husband is retired from the NFL and we use those platform of music and sports as a tool to reach families in crisis all over the country. That's awesome, Gail. Thank you so much. We so appreciate all of uh, your work and, and being, you know, being here with us. Gail was just with us at our last event. Um, and, and so her and her husband both were just amazing at that. So what's one takeaway that you really, really want people that are reading your chapter and watching this to know and to feel? Um, to know that no matter what your situation, what, what situation you find yourself in, whether it be anger or doubt, even if you're tired or afraid, put it on pause. That's why I, I, I titled, entitled my book that put it on pause when you feel these strange emotions but count it not strange because these kind of things are going to happen but just put it on pause pray and wait for the end um i do see nisi nisi is here um so we're gonna move on from from gail and go to our third author miss uh Nisi Johnson, and we're going to bring her to the forefront. And so, um, welcome. And so, just give us a brief introduction of yourself, Nisi. Hi, everybody. So, my name is Nisi Johnson, and I am uh, a couple of things in the daytime. My regular nine to five, I am a product manager where I work for a software company. Um, and then, I am also a filmmaker. And um, if anyone wants to take a look at the film, it kind of aligns with what Elite does, which is it focused on sex trafficking of minor children. So if you guys are interested in that, um, follow Taking Innocence Project on Instagram or Facebook, or you can also watch the film on Quaz TV. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. Awesome, Nisi. So what's one takeaway that you would like for your readers to have after reading your chapter? So um, my sister already read it. Okay. <laughs> and, um, uh, she, you know, she, she messaged me and she said, you know, um, I'm going to share this with, you know, a friend. And I said, that is perfect. That is exactly what I want people to do. I want you to find that friend that, 
has gone through trauma and hasn't found a source or a way to get out of it, share it with a friend. And then eventually, you know, uh, along with my sisters here on the panel, you know, we'd like to actually, um, you know, talk with other women. And it, it's about each other supporting each other, you know? So I definitely would like to do more small groups and support groups. And and the, the goal for me is talking about trauma. I mentioned in my chapter that the devil thrives on silence and it, it is the food that feeds him. And I do wholeheartedly believe that. Like, I believe that when we are silent, we are not giving our children the tools that that's needed to equip them to break these generational curses. We are the third and fourth generation. And we're just, a lot of times we're not equipped because we haven't been exposed enough and we haven't talked enough. So that is the goal really to actually, um, uh, you know, lock arms with other women, my sisters here on the panel and, and those of other women out in the world. So our next author that I'm going to bring up on screen is our very own Angel Carter. So Angel has been working with the Elite Foundation for quite some time, but also has quite a, quite a story to share. So Angel, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Angel Carter and I'm so excited to be here today and um, I work for the Elite Foundation. I am the Victim Advocate Care Manager and my passion is to bring hope to the hopeless. Thank you so much. So Angel, why did you want to write your story now? Well, it's very important that my story is written now because there's so many people like I was that's walking around with secrets, secrets of shame that's holding them down and they don't know how to get free from it. Well, my chapter shows you how to get free from shame. So I'm really, really, really excited to, um, to launch it today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So what's one takeaway that you want anyone that reads your book? to, you know, to, to have with them forever. You know, what's that one thing? No matter what you've done or where you've been or what you've been through, there is freedom and there is hope. And my chapter is to bring that hope and freedom to you. So if you've been through anything, it doesn't matter how big or small it is, know that there is hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, so why don't you tell them, because we have a little bit more time, so why don't you tell them a little bit about the I Care line that you manage for us? Okay, the I Care line is, is my line. Um, it's very dear to my heart. Like I said, I lost my daughter to sex trafficking, and um, this I Care line, it, it helps. Uh, so it's for the survivors and the victims of sex trafficking and sexual exploitation. They can call in and um, get prayer. They can get resources, um, connect them to other people. And it's just such an amazing, amazing thing because when my daughter was trafficked, I didn't get help from my daughter and me. No one was there to help me. And the I Care line, that's what they stand for. They're there to help. They are the person that will get you whatever you need to get through the trauma and pain that you have suffered. So even if it's just prayer, I mean, it's there. That's what we do. That's right. Thank you so much, Angel, for all your contributions and your story that has already helped significantly. And I've, I've personally witnessed, you know, people who have heard your story and have made changes in terms of their daughters and what, that they, what they need to do to make sure that they're okay and they're not being exploited or potentially traffic. So, you know, we, we appreciate everything there. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our next author. We have Candy Wyndham with us. Now, Candy's fairly new to us, but, you know, she's definitely now one of our sisters, you know, in the Elite Foundation and the publishing component of things. So, Candy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh my God, first, I just want to say thank you for inviting me. This is an amazing, an amazing thing that I, I just celebrate. And that's what I said, celebrate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the things that I always, always do is that 
everything that I do in my life, I celebrate at the end of the day, no matter what I do. I know you, you're friends with um, uh, one of our authors from another book. So I'm, I'm glad that she was able to share her experience and that you were able to join us. So my next question is the one takeaway that you want people to have after reading your chapter in the book. So with that chapter, you're gonna have the three amazing strategies that you're gonna be living. First, you gotta live from the present. Second, you have to live from your heart because if you will love yourself, if you love everything around you and you're being grateful, things just magical things and just it's appeared to your life. So you are not gonna be focusing on what you lost and the things that you are doing or not doing. You just feel like this this is just amazing. I'm being grateful at all this moment. And one and the third strategy that is gonna be finding in the book is yes strategy. You gotta say yes to the opportunity. Don't overthink, feel it. If that feeling feels good, go for it. Thank you so much, Candy. We so appreciate your story and being a part of this um, sisterhood. So thank you very much. So now, before I bring on our next author, we have a gift away. So we have an, a gift bag here. So the winner will receive all four of our new books, or all four of our books. Uh, because you've already you already bought the, the chosen, I'm thinking on Amazon, but you will get. Um, I'll show you the books here. We have Invincible. Oops, you can't see it. Invincible. We have Unstoppable. We have Fearless, and we have Overcome. So the winner will receive all of those. They'll receive a $25 gift certificate to Starbucks, and they'll get our do-it-yourself book writing program that is automated and so you can learn all our secrets and do this yourself if you want to so let's see who's the winner we have a name i have a name we're randomly selecting names yeah okay what's the name nancy i know you you sent me a name and i can't find it sorry drum roll while, while we're waiting <laughs> Lisa Jenkins, yay, Lisa. <laughs> so Lisa, make sure that you write in the chat your address and name so that we can get this right to you. Okay, so the next segment of our authors will start out with Miss Luz Rodriguez. And so, you know, Luz is, um, again, fairly new to the Elite Foundation, but we've welcomed her and, you know, she has an amazing story to share. So. Luz, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Luz, and I was born and raised in New York City. I am a mother, and I'm happy and proud to be a mother. Um, I, I also attend my home church, and I serve in the ushering ministries for almost 18 years. And I just started a connect group with my home church on educating awareness on human trafficking. So I am the leader of that group, and I also co-lead another Bible group every Thursday. So I thank God for his faithfulness and how he's using me to glorify his name. So I just want to say thank you, everyone, for having me here, and thank you, everyone, that came this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. I always love your energy and your excitement for things. So you just had one, one topic. Uh, or one takeaway from your story, what would that be? I titled this book, I prayed and I asked the Lord, and I had like five different titles. And I shared the title with Alejandra. She told me, I love it. I love that title. I said, you know what, Alejandra, this is the title. This is the title. Thank you. God just used it to confirm it. Because when my daughter was kidnapped, at the last service of my church, it was a prayer service. It was January 5th. That's when she was rescued. This young girl, she started praying for me. She whispered in my ear, your daughter is going to be rescued. And I said, wow. 
And I always pray at the midnight hour. There's something about praying at the midnight hour. God always speaks to me at the midnight hour. So the title that he gave me was A Voice at the Midnight Hour. And it fits perfect because God spoke to me at the midnight hour. My daughter was rescued at 1201 on January 5th at the midnight hour. And God showed his faithfulness at the midnight hour. So I said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to title this at the midnight hour because you answer my prayer at the midnight hour, even though I went through this hard time. And the one thing that I want people to know is that there's hope in Jesus Christ. That hold on, don't give up. Even if you're going through your darkest moment, God is going to shine that light and you will walk out just like the Israelites did through the Red Sea. Do not give up. Do not look back like Lot's wife did. Keep going forward because God is with us and God is going to walk us through it because he said in Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God and God fights for us and God has never, ever lost a battle. And I'll leave you with this. He will never lose a battle. So hold on. I don't know what you're going through. Hold on, read this book because you're going to be so encouraged of all the testimonies that these women have written. This is the time, this is the time, this is the time to stop and to read and to say, you know what God, faith over fear. We are more than overcomers in Jesus Christ. That's what I leave you with. Amen, Liz, amen. You're getting so many comments over here in the chat. So please go. Please go read them because they're amazing. God is faithful. Yeah, he sure is. Well, thank you so much. We are so excited uh, to have you as part of our team and, you know, to have shared your story and your amazing, um, your amazing experiences with, you know, how this all came to fruition. So we, we so appreciate that. So we're going to bring up the next author um, and that's Alejandra. Alejandra has also been part of the Elite Foundation uh, support for several years now. So, you know, we so appreciate her coaching skills. She's beautiful. She's helped us all get camera ready. Um, you know, so we just really uh, appreciate everything that she has um, to help us with. So Alejandra, are you there? I'm here. How are you, Wendy? And thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I love the energy and I love each and every one in this um, in this panel right now. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So thank you, Wendy. I'm Alejandra. They call me Ali for sure. Um, I am from Venezuela. I've been here for a long time. I still have a huge accent, but I'm very proud of it. <laughs> if there's one takeaway uh, from your story, what would you want your readers to go away with? I want this new generation to understand um, that there is a connection, that there is a connection between uh, people, you know, nowadays where everything is about technology and all of that. And this book is actually going to talk also about what happens with that connection, you know, um, the connection of having someone next to you as your partner. Uh, how do you grow as two people, as a two people into a healthy relationship? You know, this is a business that we have as a partner, you know, so I want this new generation to actually grow into into healthy relationships. Thank you so much. We're, we're so excited to have you again as part of our family. Last but not least, we have Deliza Kramer. And um, Deliza, again, is fairly new with us, but we're hoping that she'll begin a lifelong journey with, uh, with the Elite Foundation and our publishing arm. So Deliza, are you there? I am, hi, thank hi. you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, Wendy, this is my first time uh, writing a book. This is my first time being involved with the Elite Foundation, and I was actually recommended to you all by a friend of mine that had also written and chosen. And so I'm very excited to be here, and it's been an amazing process and just learning how to get my story across. 
that's awesome. So thank you so much. We love it when we get referrals from, from those who have had success with our program and enjoyed it. So what's one takeaway that you want the readers to have from your story? Yeah, absolutely. So for me last year was really, you know, a hard year. And so I wanted to share my story about different things that happened throughout last year, but it was really, you know, a combination of a lot of things that had been happening throughout my entire life. But I want to say that last year really brought it all together and it hit me really hard. And I started to realize that, okay, I really want to um, not hide anymore. You know, as a young woman in the business world, in the professional world, it's really hard because sometimes I feel like professionals, we feel like we need to have it all together and, you know, have ourselves very well put together and um, look the part, speak the part. And I think that sometimes we get a little bit um, loose sight of, of who we are in, in putting up this facade and, and telling everyone that we're okay. So I titled my chapter, um, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, because I felt like the reader, um, and again, specifically professional women or anything in the professional world that feels like you always have to have it together. You don't always have to have it together. And that's what makes us human and that's what makes us relatable and that's what makes us real. And so to be able to share our stories and to say, hey, you know what, I'm going through this, but I can share this with people that maybe have also gone through it and then we can help each other and we can work it out and, and talk about it and not keep those feelings um, inside and, and actually um, being relatable to others. Thank you, Jalisa. Are there any questions specifically for Jalisa? I am putting in the chat, uh, someone had asked about how they could get the other four books. so. It's, I'm putting in the URLs. They're available on Amazon. Uh, you can just go to the search and find it um, if you want. But I'm also putting the URLs. They're long, but I'm putting them in the chats for you guys to uh, just go directly into, um, into the Amazon area and purchase the books for yourself. So we have both Kindle versions and the soft copies of everything but Chosen. So Chosen's uh, hard copy will come back out uh, soon, you know, we wanted to to do the launch with the Kindle version for very specific reasons that you'll hear in a little bit. Um, but we'll we'll tell you as we go. So we do have one more drawing, and I think that we're going to take um, questions from any of the attendees or panelists. If there's any questions out there, um, please put them in the chat, and we can ask anyone that's still here. I think we have pretty much all of our authors still here. So if there was something that you didn't get to ask someone, um, now is your chance. Number one, it was Jesus. And number two, it was people like you and the women that's on this panel this, and Dr. Um, Jessica Vera to come alongside me, lock shields, um, speak life into me, lift me up and just um, help me do life together? I mean, the easy answer is is God, okay? <laughs> Let me also give you a real world answer as well. Um, I think that strength comes with movement. It comes with action. There were many times that I had to take steps when um, I wasn't strong enough. But once you take that first step, that first step is what links you to courage. And I think that once I realized that pattern, that just taking action, even though you're afraid, even though um, something might be unknown to you, just take that first step. It feels so much better. Things get more clearer. You can't walk a path if you're not moving. I'm actually just now putting together a talk show. It's called Let's Talk. And we're gonna be talking about um, ending human sex trafficking and the effects of it 
with the family members, those who are survivors of it. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different topics, and I'm going to be sharing this book uh, with the world, with every, everyone on every platform, Amazon, because I'm all over the place. So this book will definitely go because there's so many, all these women are unstoppable. I have a 20 year old daughter and I'm, and I am trying to focus on this young generation. Um, and with this book and with the help and the coaching that I do, I want to be able to help people in this new generation. So my job is to actually be a speaker, uh, to use the book and to use all of my coaching uh, career to be able to help this new, new generation. That is a group that I'm, um, I'm going to be working on and um, I'm going to be doing a lot of, you know, a woman's workshops and studies uh, with the workbook and the book and everything that, it, you know, the strategies that they can do. And I'm going to be focused a lot in the youth because youth doesn't have enough information, enough things to do so they can be successful in life. So and this is what I'm going to be using. And I just become a speaker for the NSA. So that's it's going to be opening my, so many opportunities to share the story, share the book and be uh, and and change the world. That's basically what I want. Gail, why did you want to write your story now? Well, you know, right now we're living in so such a critical time and people are confused and disillusioned about a lot of things and um, they're living in fear of the unknown. So they're panicking in every situation. Everybody's kind of on edge. So my purpose for writing this book right now was to just give people to say, hey, now's the time to stop, sit back, go into your prayer closet and pray because, and pray not just for yourself, but pray for the world. Pray for the situation and circumstances that we're in right now, but don't react, don't get angry, don't get confused because God has always has a purpose for our life and he's always covering us. I would say the short answer is prior to now, I wasn't ready um, and to go into detail around that. Um, I feel like when my particular trauma um, occurred, I went through a phase where I was leaning into my own understanding. And the Bible says, do not lean into your own understanding. So that took time for me to realize God's covering on my life. And I also didn't know what my purpose was. So it just took time for me to gain the clarity that I needed to be able to actually put pen to paper. Whenever I told anybody about my story, they always say, oh, that should be a movie or that should, you know, you should put it in a book. I, I just wasn't, I wasn't there yet. I needed God to kind of guide me and order my footsteps to kind of give me, um, I, I didn't want it to be just about my my story. I wanted it to be what it is. And, and the purpose of it is to create healing and to really, really push and promote breaking generational curses. Um, and in my family, that generational curse, I talked about it in, in my chapter, and it was domestic violence. For others, it might be uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. I mean, it, it can be a number of things. Whatever it is, I think that you have to, um, you have to A, be able to embrace what that trauma is and then you also have to realize that it's not just going to be you to bring you out of it so that is finding you know your support system and your family and your friends and then and in god and so i think you know like i said I, I wasn't there yet and it took time for me to get to the point where um i can actually be able to share my sto my story in the right way i need to do something with my story and I didn't know how, I just went to the launch for the Overcoming last year where my friend Carolina was doing the speech about her book and being part of the Alive Foundation. And that's when I realized if she's doing it, why not me? So that's when I decided to reach out to Jessica and I said, Jessica, I'm in. 
what is the next book? And she said, the next book is going to be Chosen. I thought, okay, I'm chosen. So that's why I decided to join and to decide to share my story. And, and it's right now, you got to do it now. The moment that you receive a call, that's when you say yes. I always wanted to write a book. And every time I try to write a book, God will tell me, not yet, not yet. This is not the story, not yet. And I will go, wow, I wonder what I'm going to go through that God wants me to put it on paper because I've already gone through hard trials as it is. So little did I know in 2018, my daughter was kidnapped in New York City and trafficked. And I did not know anything about what trafficking was. My church used to always pray and we used to always pray in my prayer group, but I always thought that trafficking was just like in China, Mexico, you know, out of the country, never in my city, never in New York City. I never really knew what it was. And I never really knew that God already had the plans of the book that I was going to write. That's why he was telling me, you're not ready. That's not the book. That's not the one I'm going to choose. I have the one that I'm going to choose you for. And this is the right time. Even through this pandemic that we're facing, there are so many people that are hurting, that are going through stuff, that they don't believe that there is a God. And we have that opportunity to share God and to the hurting. So tell us why you wanted to write your story. You've written in one of our other books before. So this one was a little bit different. So tell us about that. Yeah, so the first uh, chapter that I wrote was actually an overcomer. Um, an amazing experience because just like everyone else uh, have said, you have a story and you don't even know where to start. And then God put the right people in your life. Uh, Wendy, Jessica, Angel, I mean, Lois, everybody. And then things happen, as you can see. <laughs> um, why my story now? It's uh, funny because Overcomer has a totally different story than the one that I'm writing on Chosen. And I think Chosen is the perfect name for, for what I wrote. I think as a child, everybody grows up, you know, with the fantasy of, of finding the prince, finding the princess, they get married and, you know, and they live a happy, and they leave a happy family, uh, uh, a happy ending. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the time doesn't come like that because we do come from, from childhood. We do come from things, you know, that makes us uh, codependency, the, you know, that comes with a lot of things. And that's why a walking into relationships can be actually challenging you know so my book talks a little bit about how helping yourself having the right tools can actually help you live a healthy life for yourself and walk into a healthy relationship well elite is just what it is to me it's the elite is Elite. It is the Elite Foundation. Uh, it came. It came highly recommended uh, by a dear, dear friend. Um, and then I met after after meeting Jessica. I, we, I just fell in love with her. We had such. We have such a great connection with my organization and and the Elite Foundation. Yes, I can. And the Elite. We're already working with those type of children, young people who are really victimized by the human trafficking. So we, we decided to pair with, with one another into partnership because not only is Elite a great publishing company, but they're also involved in helping lives of other people. And that's what Yes I Can is all about as well. That's why I paired with them. I talked a little bit about the documentary and um, in, in my chapter also, I talked about my purpose and how my purpose, um, my purpose was birth from trauma. And so for me, I was in a relationship where the person tried to take my life um, three times within a span of two months where he wasn't successful. And um, he went to jail, he got out. And I don't wanna tell the whole story, you guys can read it in the chapter, <laughs> but it, it caused me to actually go through survivor's remorse. And um, that, 
remorse made me really, really focus on what my purpose was. And I went through that for years. It was a very, very painful and stressful process. Um, and then when I started embarking on this journey of kind of understanding what sex trafficking was, because I did not think it was something that happened here in the U.S. Um, it, it's, it's slavery, just, I was like, hey, it's, slavery was abolished. How is this actually still going on? And the more I uncovered and the more I discovered, I realized that my purpose was aligned to that. Um, so I chose Elite because it they aligned with my purpose and I al already sit on the board um, of directors with um, a couple of the amazing women um, that are in this book. And, um, you know, I know Jessica and Wendy and I, and I trust them. I know that they've had, this is, I believe, the fifth book in the series. Yes. And, you know, you know, I trust that they know what they're doing. All of those books have made a uh, bestseller. All of those books have been healing to other women. So I know that this book will do the same. Oh my gosh, elite, elite. What an organization of integrity. And that's one of the reasons why Elite Foundation is an organization that is built and founded on integrity. Integrity in their processes and to those they serve. Dr. Jessica Vera approached me to uh, be a part of it and just doing my own background research into Elite left no question in my mind and in my heart that I wanted to partner with Elite. I wanted to publish with Elite and moreover, I want to support Elite because what they're doing is not just changing lives here in the nation, but also around the world. Wow, that's such a beautiful loaded question. Well, Elite is so dear to my heart. I can say four years ago, I lost my daughter to sex trafficking and um, abuse and addiction. And Elite, they stand for helping the victims, the survivors, reaching out to those who need help. And when I came across Elite, it was like being able to give my daughter a voice, give her a story, let her story be told. So, and every single, every single, every single voice counts, every single dollar counts. It goes towards, every, it goes towards helping and saving others. So this Elite is such amazing to me and it's like a family for me. So I'm very, very grateful for Elite Foundation. Chosen was very, uh, called my attention. It really did. Uh, the title, it was like, oh, that's super interesting. I want to be part of that. And I put it on my vision board because I have an office with a lot of vision boards and my movies. And I was like, yes, I want to be part of that. I don't know how. I don't know if I'm going to have the money for it. I don't know if I, I didn't have no clue. I just say, you know, let's do that. And it, and it happens. And, and also because it, even have even though that I'm not sharing enough about the human trafficking in my chapter, I have a particular space in my life when I was younger, when you are in that, you know, anger to or hungry to do things, to leave Colombia, to look for a different opportunities. I was called in the moment where somebody reached out to me and say, Hey, you wanna go to Spain? Hey, we gave you a passport, we gave you this. And, and I was called with the person, the person taught me pictures and they almost gave me a passport. And when I was walking to my home, something kind of in my mind is said, I gotta share this with my mom. And when I shared that story with my mom, my mom said, hell no, don't do that. This is not supposed to do. So I had that moment when I reached out, you know, I didn't get into that, but I was called into it. So it, everything just aligned and is and when it's, you have an alignment and everything is coherence and the feeling and the story or the background and everything that you do and the core values that you have is aligned to it. That's what relies to me that I'm being part of this family. I think everyone has said it, but I am going to repeat it because I love elite. I, there's so much that I have learned, uh, not only through writing, but through helping too. 
I mean, everybody has a call and my call is to help others as, as you guys help me in so many different ways. So Elite has helped me uh, not only to write, I mean, I, we all don't know how to write a book and they were able to actually walk you through. They were a actually able to, to teach you how to do it. So we can actually go ahead and pass it down to someone else that needs the same help. Elite is actually there to support you, to love you, uh, to hear you. So I I love working with the lead and I will always um, be there with the lead. So when God put in my heart, this is the book that I want you to write. I was like, oh, I cannot do that. I don't know when to start. I don't know how to do it. And I never knew that I was going to meet Jessica and Angel. And God used them to encourage me to start my book and to write my book. So I just want to say thank you to these beautiful, wonderful women of God that have always been there for me and have always walked me through this book. It was such a wonderful blessing to work with everyone. I have been wanting to write ever since I was a little girl. I knew I wanted to be a writer. I, I went to school for writing on air for television. Um, so that was my major telecommunications. and. Uh, I think for me, it was just a matter of finding what the right fit would be and being at the right place at the right time. So because my friend had, you know, written a book with you all prior, it kind of was a smooth transition in that it came very organically and naturally. So her and I were having a conversation and I was sharing with her about the year that I had experienced and how I felt like all of these things were happening to me one thing after another. and. I really wanted to share my story because I felt extremely empowered. I felt like everything that I was going through was for a reason and I wanted other women to know and and really just anyone to know that no matter what you're going through, um, God will see you through it. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, because of this friend, when I was sharing my story and she knew of the hardships that I was going through, she said, you know what, you really should tell your story. And uh, she was connected to you all. And when I found out human trafficking is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. And I've been involved with um, other organizations in donating financially, donating uh, time, and just being involved in helping with that cause. And so I felt like when I learned about Elite Foundation and what you all do for human trafficking and helping victims and rescuing them, um, that meant the world to me. And I said, you know what? I get to write and do a good thing. And so it's a win-win. Um, Jessica, is there anything that you would like to say? Hey everyone, congratulations on this amazing, amazing launch of your written work. I couldn't be prouder of what everyone has accomplished. I know that it has not been an easy process all the way through because it never is, right? Writing is a creative and when there's creative flow, there's always things that come at you to kind of like derail and block and sidetrack. Um, but I'm just um, beyond excited, happy, impressed. Um, I had the privilege of reading through all of your content and then formulating this amazing work that's going to hit the world in such an impactful way. And we'll be announcing just how impactful it has been already shortly. But um, unlike the previous books, this book actually is the foundational book for women's circles. So there is actually a study guide that you are going to receive when you purchase this, um, this book in hard copy. It, that will allow you to do your own individual study as well as create circles for your sisters in arms or, you know, for your community at large, whatever your target market is. So as Wendy said, we at Alita are always creating business models that give back. We believe that when you invest in yourself, you're not only investing in yourself, but you're investing in those that need our help the most. We are a 100% volunteer-based organization. There are no salaried employees with the exception of Angel Carter. <laughs> Other than that, 100% of every dollar that is either generated through our programming or donated through our portals or our programs or our campaigns go 100% towards um, scholarshiping individuals to be able to do programs like this, as well as direct services, as you've already heard. 
So again, I'm just really um, excited and pleased and I am beyond words. Usually I'm not a loss for words, but right now I am. Um, we've been juggling a few things on the back end and it's all been doing beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. And I want to also a big shout out for our moderator for today, which was Wendy Elliott, who did an amazing job in steering you all through this incredible launch of your Kindle version. And I had put in the chat that we're going to open it up and actually bring in the audience into the green room in case we want to have a little dialogue with the authors because we have this extra time. So this is an opportunity to be able to do that. So if you are in the audience, we're about to hit the click button that will allow you to come into the green room, which we don't typically do, but we're going to do because we have this extra time. Um, and if you have any questions or anything that you wanted to have answered or any questions you might have about the foundation or the program or anything for the authors, feel free to come on in now. So let, let me, me, there is a question that, um, um, that was asked about if they don't have a Kindle, how can they download the Kindle version? So the Kindle is, is kind of just a name only. You don't have to have the little device anymore. You can download it on your phone. You can download it on your desktop. So just download the app on your phone and you can get the Kindle version on your phone as well as there's a desktop application that you can also download and it shows up right on your computer. So you don't have to have the little Kindle um, version anymore. Oh, there's everybody. Hi. So any questions, it, do you guys have questions of each other's that you don't know? I mean, I know some of you know each other just from some of our uh, gatherings and meetings, but others don't. How was the experience today? I was gonna say one thing that I learned. I learned that Allie has a 20 year old daughter. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, right, she looks, she looks 20. She look, yes. <laughs> I'd like to say congratulations to everybody. And I was very happy I had fun doing this with you guys. And um, thank you for inviting me. And I can't wait to see you guys change the world. Nancy. Yeah. So for those who do not know Nancy here, Nancy is a veteran of the foundation. She's part of our literary team. She joins us when she can because um, she doesn't hail from Florida. She's been a best-selling author on our first book, which was Invincible, right? Mm -hmm. Or in fact, rather, which was Invincible. And since then, we haven't been able to get her to One Day to Freedom for a number of reasons. But this year, this year, ladies, yes. mark your calendar. October 16th is One Day to Freedom, God willing, in person. <laughs> like our gala two years ago. Last year, it was virtual. So you are welcome to take yourself off mute if you have anything. I have a hand up that's indicating that Ms. Bluford has a question. But I don't see her on screen. Yeah, I don't see the hand either. Yeah, I can see the hand. Well, just in case anybody's interested you know we we do these book programs one time a year every year about june july we publish our collaborative book so those of you that haven't written with us before and may be interested in that we'll start um the campaign probably when do we normally start that like november december um, but if you're interested you don't have to wait you know we can share that information with you uh even before that so we haven't quite come up with the name yet unless Jessica has it in their in the back of her brain and we haven't we haven't found that out yet but um you know we we have the four that we've already done chosen is the fifth and we hope to do many many more because there are so many stories out there that are amazing and that can be so helpful with um with those out there that are struggling uh, with the same the same situations that you've been in Yeah, just to piggyback on that, the campaign actually starts in August and it, what it is is the call for action for first we do five scholarships. So every single book that we write, there are five scholarship survivor scholarships that are awarded. 
So until this book, we've awarded $156,000 in scholarships to survivors and victims of different types of exploitation, including trafficking, who have a story that they want to tell but don't have the funds to go to a traditional publishing and they know that they need to get this story out. We will open that vetting in August. It is a completely blind process. We put up a call to action. If you feel that you have a story that needs to be heard, that you meet the criteria, what you do is you fill out a little um, text box that's about 250 words that gives us the concept of your chapter. It then goes through a vetting process uh, um, with a panel of individuals who are unrelated to the foundation. They review the entries and they award the five individuals who will be the scholar um, writers for the next book in the series. Our traditional campaign for the book program starts, as um, Wendy said, in October. Um, and we start vetting authors from October until the end of the year. If you apply, what ends up happening again, it goes to a literary agent, you're assigned one, they do all of the vetting of the authors typically, um, and then they identify those that are their writing genres, their storylines, they're all cohesive with the focus of the book that will be published in January. The program is just six weeks long. It is a concept to pay for to publish book where part of it is instruction and guidance and then the foundation takes on all the publishing logistics which typically is a very heavy lift for writers it's the daunting part you know 89 percent of people know that they're supposed to write a book but only three percent ever get published and less than that ever go to bestseller so do we have a drum roll miss wendy <laughs> yes <laughs> last watch <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I am so excited to let all of you guys know that we hit number one best new release in not just one category, but three categories. Good job, guys. That is awesome. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Um, so we that's have amazing. To we want to get more reviews, more ratings, you know, because we I submitted five categories and I want to get all five categories. So start reading your books, start doing reviews. Those of you that haven't um, share still because we still have the opportunity to do that. Um, we are still um, so from a bestseller perspective, we hit the top 10 in four categories. So, you know, again, congratulations on that. You know, that's like amazing amazing and i'm not giving up yet we're gonna hit more so, <laughs> yeah. congratulations so this is why we wait to publish the hardcover is because we know that we want to put on there the accolades as you can see you know this one says international bestseller i haven't checked that yet so we might we might be international bestseller um but anyway you go to categories that we hit number one so we hit in journal journaling, we hit in Christian counseling, and we hit in uh, history of psych, psychology, and then women writers. So, so to put it in perspective, there are typically anywhere between 350,000 titles being released every hour of every day on Amazon. So to hit number one best release, you beat out 349,000 titles. <laughs> wow. Gosh, that is incredible. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes. God yes. Is we got to give God yes. gold praise for that. That is so yes. incredible. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Wow. And one of, the, one of the great ones, you know, and, and when I was looking up our status, you know, is the you know, the Christian living and counseling and the authors that are in that category that we're up against is amazing. So, you know, wow. all of your works and all of your beliefs, you know, gave us the opportunity to be in that category. So, you know, congratulations to you on that. What is our standing on the four categories on bestseller? Where are we at? Because we need the momentum. We need to get energized. Where are we at? So we hit number two in Christian counseling, bestseller, number two. Wow. Wow. We hit number, number three in journal writing. We hit number five in um, the history of psychology. And we hit number seven in women writers. So Very nice. I love that. I love that. Women writers. That's I know, right? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's very cool. That's a cool category. Yeah. yeah. I love all of you women. I am so impressed by hearing all the testimonies and the beautiful stories. Very, they, they really hit my heart today. I think I was just like receiving so much from what everybody said. Jessica, thank you so much for encouraging me to write a book. I would have never, ever done it. Never. Total God. Total God. Yeah. And that you don't lose uh, momentum, ladies. This is the goal. This is just the beginning. This is just yes. so good. We need you to rally all your fans. Get them to buy now the Kindle version. Get them to do the reviews. Now you understand. The reviews will push your standing on bestseller. You're able to get the accolade of the release, but we want to go after bestseller number one in our five categories. We still have opportunity, yeah. but timing is everything. Remember what we said, crowding. So you really need to push, push, push all your fans to write reviews because that's the only way that we can elevate the level of the book. The minute that Wendy and I decide, okay, we're going to cut it off, that's when we will land on the accolade and we'll get your hardcover reprinted with all of your beautiful accolades and then we go to press. So next step on the choo-choo train is getting your hardcover copies, okay? And then getting rallied up for your one day to freedom in person, in person. Yeah. 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 If you guys go to the the Amazon page right now, I'm going to share my screen if I can. Is that okay? Yeah. I'll show you exactly what it looks like on Amazon. Do you guys see this? Yes. Yes. See this yeah, number we one, do. Yeah. Number one yeah. new release. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Down, wow. Wow. Down here, another way. We're number five bestseller right now in history of psychology. Ooh, we're number yes, five bestseller in Christian counseling, and we're number five in journal writing. So, you know, wow. this is on an ongoing wow. basis. Thank you, like Lord. I it's amazing. Whoa. It is Isn't amazing. It? I'm, I'm, that, that's amazing. That's, I just, I just I cannot. I'm so excited in my heart and in expectation with what God is going to continue doing. Right. Because the glory of the man. Here is yeah. all of your beautiful pictures and your author pages. So, you know, you'll be connected and people can see your story. And, and you know, as you write more in your life, you know, you connect those books. So just congratulations. I'm so proud of every single one of you guys. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. Today was yeah. great. Everybody did a really great job. They I really enjoyed it. Uh, Liz, or is it Les? You you did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Holy Spirit was all over you. You know, oh, yeah. you exactly <laughs> what you're saying. So, has her it's up. all about yeah. Jesus. At the end of the day, this whole concept is all about Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lavanya, for your address. So, Lavanya, we love you too. And she's like, I'm ready for another Just Girls conference. She said to Gail. So. Oh yes, Lavanya <laughs> works with all my Just Girls conferences. You know, that's what's so cool about this. The Just Girls is just meshes so perfectly with the human trafficking because these are kids who are products and um, they're already in that environment. They're candidates waiting, you know, because they're in they're from the inner city and uh, they don't have a, a home life like and we do. Very or, vulnerable to all of extremely this. Extremely vulnerable. So I, it, I'm, I'm even more challenged to do more of what I do. And thank you, Lavonia. You know, all my guests that I invited, they all won the prizes too. Oh, are they both your guests? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they both were. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> it wasn't rigged, we promise. <laughs> I promise, I pray to God it wasn't rigged. But <laughs> so, uh, Nancy randomly selected from the attendees. It just has to be that way. Yes, thank you so much. Everything was great. I enjoyed you girls. Wendy, you did a great job. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I had a lot of help. So I had a lot of people in the background. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I love you guys. Allie. Yeah, I love you guys too. So, so we have enjoy your your holiday weekend, ladies. Oh yes. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Stay.
Be prayerful, be careful. That's what I always tell my kids. Be prayerful, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I want to share something before we move on. I just want to say first, thank you, Jessica. You did an amazing job with your team and Jill. Wendy, you're an amazing. I can wait to hug you and to see you mm -hmm. in person. And the love to you guys and each of you, Gail, Sandra, Anthony, Lisa, Luz, you are terrific and amazing souls. And I just can't wait to hug you to keep growing. And, and this is just a stepping stone, a, a really amazing milestone that we have reached. And we are going to do a miracle, miracle things in life. Yes. Not just for what we do right now, but for the people that we're gonna be serving and adding value. So I just wanna say thank you from my heart and you guys, I love you. I just wanna let's say, I love you. <laughs> the platform is already set ladies. All we gotta do is go. The door is can wide I, open. We can I just something? We got right puppets there? book everywhere, everywhere. Go loose. You wanted to show something? Loose. Yes, yes. I just want to say thank you to everyone. These stories were so amazing. Oh what well, God is doing, mean, just to witness in the short time that I know all of you, just to witness what God is doing in each and every one of our lives. And it's amazing how God is going to use these stories just to bring life. And he's going to glorify his name like never before. And I yes. always say, that when you write, you expose the enemy and we kick the devil for who he is because yeah. God is greater than anything. I have this joy and this expectation in my heart of what God is just yeah. about to do is, I believe it's going to be something out of the ordinary because that's who God is. He yeah. is just so amazing. He's going to take the little bit that we gave and make it so big for yeah. his glory and his honor. And I just want to say it was such a blessing working, knowing all of you. I just want to hug all of you, just like I can. <laughs> I just want to hug you. I can't wait to October. Oh, just yeah, there you go. <laughs> to hug Jessica and to hug Angel and to hug Wendy, to hug Gail, everyone, all of you. Just amazing. What a beautiful team. And only God can do this. So I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, God. And I want to say thank you to all my friends that were here today the support of my friends and and everyone what a blessing when we do things in unity the word of god says that he will command a blessing Amen. when we work together in one accord and in unity god is faithful to command a blessing so i just want to say thank you god for your faithfulness thank you jesus because if it wasn't for your holy spirit i never would have made it i never would have done this and for the people that you sent in my life to walk me through this, I just want to say thank you. Thank we you love guys. you. Thank, thank you guys. so much. I would like to ask a yeah. question really quick that Sandra had asked me. Um, the question really hit my heart, so I would love to answer that question. She asked me if I could say one thing to my daughter that passed away right now, what would that be? And I would say thank you. I would say thank you for her life. I would say thank you for every just being my daughter that God chose her to be my daughter because without her life without her death I would not be where I am right now I would not be in the process that I'm going through so I would say thank you and Sandra I know that your sister is a big part of your life as well and she was a big part of your story can I ask you the same question what would you say to your sister right now if you could say something to her Thank you for that question, Angel. Before I answer that, if it's okay, I want to say I'm in awe. Um, Jessica, um, you're just an amazing woman. Um, you're an amazing human being. Uh, uh, from the moment that I met you, um, I felt like I was a spectator uh, in my life. And I always do, by the way, I didn't think I was going to see 20 in my life because so much trauma. But when I met you, um, you are just, there's so many layers to who you are. And I just want to say thank you to you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you to your entire team. And I want to say thank you to Nisi. 
um, it's people like you both that gives survivors a voice. And like it was said, um, trauma paralyzes us, but we can't move. And um, you allow us to move. You, you, allow, you allow us to quantum leap out of that trauma so we can begin to see purpose in it. So first of all, I wanna say thank you. I'm in awe of you. Jessica, thank you. Your team, thank you. Um, Nisi, thank you. I love you both. What would I say to my sister? Joy, um, I would tell her that I love her and um, I'm, I'm almost there. We're getting ready to do a foundation in her memory, um, our healing part. And we got the last part i think the best is yet to come <laughs> and that's good that's good enough yeah you know but just listening listening to 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 wendy and Sandra, you know, I'm, I'm a little teary eyed or emotional right now, but it just proves the scriptures are so true that all things work together for the good, you know, because that was major tragedy for both of you. And just, I remember sitting back in the green room in Florida waiting to perform and I'm just hearing all this stuff really for the first time. Jessica, she invited me, but I really didn't know what I was in for. And, and there I was sitting back, thanks Jessica. I'm sitting back in the green room and I'm listening to Wendy come on and share all this stuff about her daughter. I, I was just amazed and I'm so glad and so honored to be a part of something so powerful. And I know that this is one thing to be having authority. It's another thing we are going to take dominion over this human trafficking situation. Because God has given us the authority to do it. We are his people and this is his work. This is kingdom work. One yeah. one on one, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to, I, I wanted to thank my um, family and, and friends that joined today. And um, this is this is uh, a little emotional for me because I feel like it's full circle. When I started working on the the series um, Taking Innocence Project, I met Angel, I met Sandy, and never in imagine you uh, you know in a million years did i imagine that we would be here today right so just hearing their stories back then it it touched me but not only did it it touch me it connected us in a way that i can't even describe and so you know just today they are my sisters and i am just so happy that you guys are on this journey with me. And, and I think it just means so much to actually co-author with you guys as my sisters, along with everybody else on this panel. Hey, I agree with you. And you're, you're beautiful. All of you women are beautiful. Every single one of you. Thank you for just involving me. I'm just happy to be a part. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Nisi. Love you too. Um, Lavanya, we will be post-producing this recording as we do every time that we do a launch. It will be part of the campaign leading up to the live event called One Day to Freedom. And this year, I'm going to just let the hat or the cat out of the hat. We are partnering with Yes You Can, yes, you can because this Yay. way we can meet both minor girls' needs as well as our own, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, and that will be October 16th of 2021 in person. So this segment of this launch will be used and you'll be able to download it on our YouTube channel at any time to answer your question in, in the chat. If I could be so bold as to say that we call the time, unless there's anyone else who has any pressing questions, just to be mindful. And I'm just gonna ask Angel if she will pray us out. Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord. We thank you. I would like to say something really quick. Sure. Yes, Tara. 
Melissa. Oh, Melissa, I'm sorry. I see hands. Go ahead. I just want to say that uh, it's been a blessing. I've been... We're not hearing you, Melissa. Andrew, you're not hearing me. All right, hold on. That's better. Let me... Whatever you just did, it was better. I think now we lost you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, we may have lost her. All of them. And did you also have a question while Melissa is getting herself organized? Mm -hmm. Sarah? Mm -hmm. I don't think she, did you have a question as well, Tara? No, I was praying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aww. Melissa, you want to try again? So, Father God, again, we just come before you and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for getting us where we are right now. Lord, we each know that we would not be here without you, God. We thank you, Lord, that, that our story is going to touch many lives. So, Father God, we ask that you send forth your angels right now on behalf of Chosen to get it to every ear, to every reader that needs to read this word, to needs to get set free, Lord. So we just come together right now and we break those chains off of people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We say yes and amen. If we can do it, they can do it. So, Father God, we just put a firewall protection around this book in the mighty name of Jesus, a Shadrach, a Meshach, and a Bendigo firewall. God, that nothing can get in, nothing can stop your word from going forth. So we yes. just bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, for all that you are doing in our lives, and the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank amen. You. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, angel. I love you. You're an angel. <laughs> I do I do want to acknowledge I see you know we've been talking about women this whole time I see we have Keith Krause here so I want to I want to congratulate Keith for being here this whole time and listening to all of us women so Keith we appreciate you being here thank you and yeah. there's Melissa, Melissa, um, Melissa. I'm, back. I'm back can you hear me now yes, yes. okay I just want to say I had the honor of meeting um, Dr. Sandra through uh, Lee County Health Department and doing her mentoring program and meeting Angel. And with what I've been going through in my life, and this is just a divine appointment and to be able to zoom in and listen to you guys about Chosen, I know that I've been chosen for a generation as this with my story and my testimony. and hearing uh the first lady about the generational curses being the fourth generational breaking that domestic violence i am literally going through all that in my life right now in this season of breaking those curses certain things because my mom's passed away my dad my grandmother um i have a 17 year old that is doing some of the same behaviors i did and it's time to break it and stop it so I truly, truly thank God for each and every one of you. And also the one where your daughter was kidnapped in New Jersey or yeah, or in New York. Um, my daughter's father had took off with my daughter for a little bit, was in a good situation. And also I had went to church and a lady prayed and said, your daughter will be back tomorrow by 10 o'clock in the morning. And I got that phone call that my daughter was back and she was only six months at the time. Um, so this helped me a lot. So I thank you all ladies. I thank God for each and every one of you. And my book will be next. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes. That is really awesome. So that thank, is you awesome. thank you for inviting me and letting me partake of this. Cause, um, wow. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Amazing. We love Amazing. You. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also want to thank Keith, too. I, I don't know if he's the only guy on there, but Keith is the 
nephew of the great Andre Crouch and the Disciples. That is his uh, nephew. He's a producer friend of mine. And I'm so glad he came <laughs> with all these women. Thank you, Keith. I love you. <laughs> Savonia, thank you for coming. Uh, my guests, I think you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. I love you. Oh, yeah. want a gift. <laughs> I, would, I would love to ask Keith what he got from it from a male's perspective. Yes. I know, is he still on? Yeah, he's on. Yeah. I'm, okay. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I've been all, I, I had no idea what I was jumping into. You know, I knew that Gail was a part of something and I set my clock, I'm in LA and I'm like, you know, I, I, I pressed, you know, snooze for like, you know, once or twice. Um, I was just thinking when it comes to Mark. some of you women and the things that you guys have gone through, it, it's such a blessing to be able to have the testimonies that you guys have, but when it comes to moving forward and ministering to, you know, women in that, in that, in those areas that you can really put yourself in their shoes to be able to witness to them. So I'm just happy to be a part of, you know, just witnessing something that's happening from the ground up. And I'm very proud of you, Gail. Aww. You know, I will say this too, you know, Art, Art and Gail are very, uh, they're, they're key figures in my life. They, they, God used them to save my life in 2009. So I, we just have a, a special, a special family bond and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Forever and ever. I love you so much. Thank you. I you know you I too. love you, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best friend right there, ladies and gentlemen. You Don't ever think you can't have a guy friend. That's my best right. friend. Right <laughs> <laughs> we have been friends forever. We've gone through thick and thin, but we have been friends forever. We will remain. Thank you. I love you. Love you too. And he's very gifted. Oh, thank you. I yeah, know all these gifted. Of that. <laughs> yeah, yes. He has produced everybody, uh, including the swag that I just put out too. I love that I was seeing it the other day. It's like you guys you have to see it. <laughs> you want to move. <laughs> She's got this. Like... <laughs> yeah. She's an awesome guy. Great, great guy. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. And oh, thank you. Keith. You know, you need to come into Elite, right? Because Chosen Kingdom Men Rising is about to launch. That's right. Oh, okay. Oh, does he have a book to share? <laughs> For real. The New York bestsellers who are writing on that book because they know it's the time. So we just did our Guardians of Hope event to end the demand, which is the men's segment. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it was okay. powerful. It was so powerful. Yeah. I'm open. Need to I'm open. Yeah. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's you, working on that one. Yes, yes. Please do go get him. Go get him, Jessica. Get him. All you have to do is look in her eyes, Keith, and you're done. <laughs> it's all kingdom work. Yes, yes. yes. It's kingdom work. Really. That's right. Have a blessed, blessed 4th of July weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Have an amazing time. Be safe. Be safe. Above all, be safe. And please, please, please keep our families and victims and those lost in a surfside tragedy. Chop a mind, chop a heart. I would really appreciate that. Amen. Love you guys. Signing off. Love you, people.